very much. Good evening, everyone. I would like to start with a question. Who of you know, or know someone who has been treated with chemotherapy? That's quite a lot, I'm impressed. Um, so basically, for those who don't know what chemotherapy is, it's a treatment by which all chemotherapeutic agents that target dividing cells are infused into the body and they are used to treat cancer. So they really target the cancer cells, but the problem is that they also target healthy cells in the body and they cause side effects. And one of the most prominent side effects is chemotherapy induced peripheral neuropathy or nerve degeneration induced by chemotherapeutic agents. And it typically starts so here's a, a, um, a scheme, schematic of a, of a nervous system, the peripheral nervous system that innervates our, our extremities, for example, in our body. Um, with these chemotherapeutic agents, uh, neuropathy typically starts in the hands and feet. And um, it leads to symptoms such as tingling, numbness, temperature sensitivity, or pain. The problem with this is that it's an, a cause, if, if patients are severely affected by these symptoms, they cannot continue with chemotherapy, so they have to terminate treatment, which really affects the treatment of the cancer, and they might die because they cannot be treated for the cancer anymore. And the problem is that there are no cures that are available for this condition. So we are using, in my lab, the zebrafish as a model system to study on neuropathy, because zebrafish are very um, easy to maintain. We can put chemotherapeutic agents into the water. And most of, important of all is they're very similar in terms of their genetic or genes that they have or to humans. So it's known that about 82% of genes that cause diseases in humans also are maintained in the zebrafish. So we can really use that model organism to study the mechanisms that lead in humans to neuropathy. And so we're using especially the larval fish because, as you can see, they're optically clear. And so we can visualize the nerve cells within the animals with um, flu fluorescent um, markers or glowing genes. So here you can see a zebra fish in which we have visualized the nerve endings in the skin. And we can now add a chemotherapeutic agent such as Taxol, for example, to the water and we can study how these nerve endings degenerate over time. And as you can see on the left, there's a healthy animal and you can only see the, the tail fin in this particular case. And on the right, there's a fish that has been treated with taxol. And you can see how the nerve endings in the distal fin are degenerating. And so we can use this model to ask, can we identify treatments for neuropathy? And so we can treat these fish with Taxol, for example, or other chemotherapeutic agents. And then we can add other compounds that could be candidates to treat this, disease or this condition. And so we have identified basically a compound. Can, you, can I have the next slide, please? <laughs> we have identified uh, a compound that, or two compounds that target an enzyme in the skin which normally degrades the skin. And when we block the activity of this enzyme, we can block nerve degeneration. And so this is just um, a graph on the left where we look at nerve regeneration because we also know that regeneration is impaired when we treat with chemotherapeutic agents. And we can find that if we treat with Taxol, then regeneration is impaired. You can see a reduction in the, the amount of regenerating nerve endings. And if we treat with these compounds, we can um, rescue this effect, and we can also treat um, together with the chemotherapeutic agent to look at degeneration, and we can now prevent degeneration. So if we have these two compounds present, then nerves don't degenerate anymore. And so we are currently performing studies in mammals, in, um, in, in mice, and also rats, and I've recently um, obtained a grant from the Maine Technology Institute to do those studies. And uh, we are asking whether we can validate this findings from the zebrafish in the, in the rodent model. And we want to ultimately um, develop these treatments for human um, applications. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. Um, any questions to start off with? Anybody has anything? Over here. Mm 
So the question is, how long will it take to go from zebrafish to humans? So I think one of the one of the steps is we have to first prove, or we have to look at the toxicity of these drugs in the context of a mammalian system. Usually, mice or or, or rats are used for that. And so once we have passed this stage, we can initiate some clinical trials. And it always depends on the money, of course, if we get enough funding for that. But it could be at least five years or longer. Yeah. Has your research uh, found anything out with peripheral, peripheral uh, neuropathy that doesn't involve chemotherapy, other forms of it, perhaps? We personally have not looked at other neuropathies yet, but there are so many different causes for neuropathy, like diabetes, for example, 50% of diabetic patients suffer from neuropathy throughout the life or throughout the disease or course. And so we have, we think that maybe the mechanism that we have identified with chemotherapy might also apply to diabetic peripheral neuropathy. And so we have started to look at this also. Um, is it at all possible that the treatments that you're doing while better for the nervous system is, um, would impede the effectiveness of chemotherapy treatments? It's also an, another possibility, so we have to look at this and um, use our rodent models with tumors, for example, to see if those drugs that we found or don't inhibit the tumor, um, tumor treatment um, or, or maybe even make the tumors grow. But I think the, the target that we have identified, this enzyme, it also is um, active in tumors, and so it might be a good thing if we target it to inhibit its activity, we might also treat the cancer at the same time. I noticed that the, uh, where you treated, you encouraged regeneration on the, 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 the uh, tail, that it actually was greater than the healthy. So is that a problem? Could you have like crazy cells growing? I don't think it was greater. Maybe it was the other graph that was a little bit greater. When we prevented it, it seemed to be that there are slightly more. It's, it's not significant statistically. But we didn't, we weren't able to completely um, have the nerve regeneration restored to the amount that normally occurs after an injury, for example. But I think we, we have the hope that potentially nerves that are already degenerated, we can promote their regeneration later. Um, I think I think once they are regenerated, or the, 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 the act of regeneration already suggests that they are healthy enough to be functional. 